members of our Middle School Builders Club and their advisors. So if those guys would all come up front here, please. They are going to be leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance, even the advisors. Look at all the sweet faces. Okay. Um, these are members of our Builders Club at the middle school. And we just wanted to kind of give a general overview on what the Builders Club does at the middle school. And they are a community service group. And so far this year, they have made blankets for the homeless shelter, scarves for the residents at Metal Lodge. They made the Easter eggs for the egg hunt. They prepared cards for our soldiers, and most important, maybe, they wash desks in classrooms and the doorknobs at the middle school to help the custodians out so that the building could be nice and clean and fresh when people came in to school. So I would like to introduce the members that we have here tonight. Uh, first, we have Erin Collins, Megan Condon, Alexis Render, Remy Slaybank, and I said it right, Emily Tackaberry, and Nicole Gore, and we also have the advisors that work with this group at the middle school. We have Mrs. Charlene Plagans, we have Mrs. Chris Nolan, and we have Ms. Sherry Bursell. And we would like to thank those advisors for the hard work that they do with these kids. We appreciate it very much. Um, so at this time, if everyone could please stand. The flag's back here, guys. There it is. So whenever you're ready, we're ready. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Turn around so everyone can see you again. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. OK, next we have our mission statement. Bridget? At Richmond Community Schools, we provide a quality education that empowers students to be successful in a, go a global community. Andy? Here. Chris? Here. Dan? Here. Tracy? Here. Jess? Here. And Margaret? I'm here. And I am here. Thank you. Thank you. Next is a motion to approve the agenda. We have. One addition this evening, a new number 11, which will be an action item, uh, the Robotics World Competition in St. Louis. So that will be closed session 12 and adjournment 13. So moved. It has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is our portion of our meeting, which is our true blue moment. We'll start with the Lee Elementary School. Mr. Walmsley. Thank you. Reading the report tonight uh, for Mrs. Dowker. Um, tomorrow we have parent-teacher conferences at the elementary school from 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, Wednesday is a half day upcoming. We have the Lego Club, which is their last meeting coming up this uh, Friday, the 17th. On the 20th, the students will have an assembly or a presentation to all second graders, excuse me, uh, entitled Germs from Macomb County Health Department. On the 22nd, uh, Earth Day, the Lee Elementary School PTO is sending pine tree seedlings home with students. There'll be a flower, flyer going home on that um, soon. And on the 23rd is Fun Picture Day, so it's an opportunity to have uh, some unique pictures. So. Good. That's okay. it for the elementary. Thank you. Uh, middle school, Mr. Bartels. Good evening. Thank you. Um, today we started the uh, M step state testing, and uh, we've had a, a successful start. Um, very encouraging. Nashville Junior Honor Society will be inducting um, the current 7th grade class for um, all of their work for next year on May 14th. Um, slight changes, we're moving it to the high school auditorium. 
um, because the National Honor Society of last year want to take more part into presenting it to the new and upcomers in the seventh grade class and we have 50 students that currently are qualified um, through the application process um, so we're just running out of room at the middle school to house everybody and that's that's excellent news Richmond Middle School Choir and Band received a two um, several weeks ago um, at their uh, competition I was able to attend the choir at Stony Creek and uh, they sounded excellent and uh, they went and performed right after a couple of gross point schools and that had hundreds of kids up there we had around 50 and our, our kids did very well and they just missed a one so we're very proud of both our choir and band Miss Bork Miss May and I have given um, four tours for families in the last three weeks to shit and um, all four shadowing opportunities where they can shadow a student for half a day or a day and I'm happy to announce that all four have turned in um, course um, enrollment packets and course um, guides selections for next year's classes uh, we had first time this year we had a fifth grade music performance where our band and choir and our two directors uh, we had them set up in the gymnasium we brought all the fifth graders down um, and again, I applaud the uh, dedication of the Richmond Middle School teaching staff for going to a seven period day so we can have sixth grade band and those opportunities. And uh, both Mrs. Shack and uh, Newman had the choirs and the bands perform and then during the performance would explain this is, you know, the percussion section, here's the flute section, explain a little bit about the instruments. Lasted about 45 minutes just to expose our current fifth graders to it so that when they're making course selections shortly here that um, they could get excited about wanting to be part of that so this was the first year of an annual we're going to do that every year and uh, they did an excellent job we had our super U challenge with our shine P it goes along with our shine PBIS program and it's about um, how to treat people and character building but it split we had a fifth and sixth grade show and then the seventh and eighth grade show and then it split the gym in half and two teams and kids came up and got slimed and it was all about uh, team building and character and how you treat people and it, it about two 45 minute shows um, it went over well I met with I, I want to say that there there are freshman sports fundraiser committee obviously mrs. Akerley who's here tonight um, and mrs. Christensen I applaud them for their efforts and met with them to go over ideas and see what we could do at RMS to help support their efforts. This Wednesday is our um, PLC, Professional Development with Teachers. We'll be doing NWA data, M-STEP um, check-in, see how it's going, and a McCall update, the technology update. Uh, the two teachers we sent will be presenting an hour of everything they learned and how we can start using that with our interactive whiteboards that we got this year, the new ones this year. And lastly, this Thursday, um, we have three great, um, we have more than three, but three excellent teachers that were um, nominated by their staffs to be the uh, representatives from Macomb County Teacher of the Year, and that banquet is this Thursday night and at the ISD, and that's always a good time. Thank you. Sean, the high school. Good evening. Uh, the high school has been pretty busy. Um, Richmond High School was certified as a heart safe school for the 2014 through 2017. I want to thank uh, my assistant principal, John Bordeaux, for working with our staff and the Lennox EMS for providing training and practice drills. He was instrumental in bringing this program to Richmond High School. Uh, as of last month, Richmond High School has a new articulation agreement with Baker College in our accounting, marketing, and business management classes. Our students can receive college credit for these courses at Baker College. Uh, three, DECA stu three students from our DECA team went to the state conference. Uh, Christian Failia uh, and Mackenzie Gaglius received a medal for being state finalist, and Mackenzie also received a medal for having one of the top scores on the written exam. Uh, we too started MSTEP today. Uh, the juniors on the week before Easter had practice and we tested out our technology to make sure everything worked. We started testing today and everything went well. 
Our robotics team, which you're going to hear about later, uh, competed at both the regional and state events over the break. We made it to the state quarterfinals, which qualifies our team for nationals at St. Louis, and you'll hear more about that. Our band, too, competed in the MSBOA District 16 Band Festival at Anchor Bay High School. The concert band was awarded a straight first division rating from a panel of three judges in the Class C and earned a medal. This ensemble earned 15 out of the 20 possible A's. Congratulations to Rochelle Rigoli, who participated in the MSBOA State Band Solo and Ensemble. At Chippewa Valley High School, she earned a near-perfect score of a 97 out of 100 and also received a first division. On Saturday, March 28th, uh, Haley Fortuna, Corey Andrus, and Daniel Sugin performed at the MSVMA State Solo Ensemble at Avondale High School. All three students performed two solo selections and sight reading for an adjudicator. All three students earned a Division I rating. Uh, both choirs performed at the MSVMA District Chorale Festival hosted by Lake Orion. The concert choir and the women's chorale both earned a Division II rating on a scale of one to five, one being superior. Uh, congratulations to all of our groups. Uh, we too would like to acknowledge um, the Teacher of the Year Award this Thursday. Uh, Mr. Murphy received uh, the Macomb County High School Teacher of the Year and he will be honored Thursday night at the banquet. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Benoit. Student activities and athletics. Hi, good evening. It's good to see you all again. Uh, spring sports are up and running. Uh, we got busy the uh, couple weeks before break, and uh, as it is typically with spring sports, once you come to spring break, many of the uh, coaches and student athletes get separated uh, for a period of time, but they are back together and. Like most spring sports, you, you take the field when you can, and so the girls' soccer team took the field today, lost a tough match uh, against Inlay City, but they'll be back home again on Wednesday as they uh, uh, entertain Elmont. Uh, we'll have home events all week, and I don't want to run through the whole month, but uh, tomorrow the baseball team, JV and Varsity, will be at home against Algonac. Wednesday, soccer is back at home. Thursday, um, the uh, track, we have a big track meet. Uh, here Friday um, baseball will be home again with Marine City Saturday freshman baseball will be home so uh, many many events coming up uh, this year um, I am I am pleased to announce that uh, with some hard work from coach Pilars the golf coach uh, myself meeting with the uh, owner and the manager at Richmond Forest we have been able to uh, secure Richmond Forest as our home uh, golf course. Um, I know for a few years it has not been. Uh, I'm not sure really why. I, I guess there is some history there, but I'm very pleased. Uh, we met with them a few times, uh, January, February, and i um, really happy to be back at Richmond Forest, our, our neighbors here in town, where I, I truly think we should be uh, playing, and, and uh, the coach feels strongly about that. I know the players are excited about that, so we're really happy to be back at uh, Richmond Forest. Uh, tennis, uh, uh, our girls' tennis program is uh, really off and running. They, the, um, the kids are fantastic. The enthusiasm is there. Um, as we all know, we don't have our own facility, um, and that's, that's okay. We, we've been using the facilities at the Parks and Rec Department, and I've been uh, working with them, uh, building that relationship and, and working with them. Um, the courts are, are very suitable for us to practice in. Uh, but uh, over the last few winters, uh, they've taken a toll on them. So hosting a, a tennis match is probably not in the cards for us this year. Um, but uh, we're working through that. Um, thanks to the coaches and the players, their parents, and uh, the other members of the BWAC. Um, I would also like to uh, congratulate all the members of the robotics team and their parents, their mentors, uh, Mr. Rudbein. What an accomplishment for them, and I, I know you're going to get more information, and I'm probably going to take things that Mr. Rudbein is going to tell you, but to be in top 10% of the state, uh, 350-some schools, that's, uh, that's impressive. It's something to celebrate, and uh, very happy for them. I just found out today 
our boys uh, bowling coach, Coach Essenmacher, was inducted uh, or will be inducted into the Michigan High School Interscholastic Association Hall of Fame. So uh, congr congratulations to uh, Coach Essenmacher. That's an outstanding and well-deserved honor. Um, I'd also like to uh, mention the freshman sports fundraiser, the committee um, of Mrs. Akerley, Mrs. Schmidt, Mrs. Van Hove, Mrs. Christensen, Mrs. Bastion, and I would include Mr. Walmsley as well. Um, we have met many times. I don't know how many times we met again today. Uh, but the, the uh, cow, pie, cow chip bingo event is uh, scheduled for uh, Sunday, May 17th. Uh, we've met many times. It's been a blast. All these ideas, the creativity, the things that uh, they're planning uh, to surround the uh, main event uh, has been a lot of fun to participate in. Uh, I'm looking forward to the event, looking forward to all the uh, things that are going to happen surrounding it. Um, things like uh, a dunk tank, the cakewalk, the uh, uh, chalk, sidewalk chalk event contest. Um, I talked to the, our friends at uh, Richmond Fire Department. They're going to have their ladder truck to give rides up and down, the historical truck to give rides around town. I'm forgetting a lot of things, but uh, it's really going to be a blast. I'm really looking forward to it. So we thank many of the members of the community and um, for their support and their anticipated support and certainly the members of the uh, fundraising committee have put in countless hours already. And uh, Mr. Ackerley, Ackerley, he has also been a huge, his creativity for the poster is really amazing. <laughs> if you haven't seen the poster, it's really, really nice. So. <laughs> All right, he's got it. That's good. So thank you, and um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Hey, yes, thank you. Our final True Blue moment tonight is um, being able to honor. We have two students who are 2015 National Scholastic Art winners, which is a pretty um, huge accomplishment, and we're very proud of these two students and so Mrs. Michonne I think you're going to come up and right. say a little something. Um, I'm actually going to introduce Mrs. Bell who can give you all the details and where they're going and what they're going to do. It is that rather exciting. I'm not sure in the history that I've been here that we've had any national winners. So this is really, really a big thing. So I'm just really going to turn it over to her and let her share everything with you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, this is Lauren Maxmuke, and her a painting is actually in another art show, um, but that's the piece that's up here. Um, and her piece is um, a bicycle, and it's actually on a road map. Um, and the way that it was done is that she actually drew um, everything but the bicycle. So she drew all the space around the bicycle and then the bicycle appeared. Um, so conceptually, it's a pretty um, fantastic piece. Uh, plus the fact that it's a bicycle on the road map is kind of, has a nice little twist to it. And then Jarrett um, Gill, this is his. This is uh, the contour of the typewriter. And a contour drawing is, um, I think it took him two days. Uh, or so, um, but it's basically one continuous line, and you kind of can't pick up your pencil. Um, so you're really looking at your object like 90% of the time. I mean, obviously, it took them two class periods or so um, to do, but uh, it's really a fun and wonderful piece, and um, again, conceptually, it's pretty unusual. Um, there were over 300,000 um, works that were submitted, and these two were in the top 1% of the nation that got awards, which is really fantastic. And um, June 10th through the 13th, they'll have honors in New York City. Um, they will each get a medal like this. Um, they both won silver medals. And um, they will, on the Thursday night, um, the Empire State Building is um, lit up in gold for all the scholastic winners, which is very exciting. 
And then the next night they get to go to Carnegie Hall to be recognized where they will wear their medals and um, have just kind of a nice, wonderful show for them. Um, and then we might take a couple extra days uh, to do a little bit of sightseeing since we're there. Um, so uh, we know that it's going to be kind of an expensive trip and we'll be having some meetings um, with the parents and so forth. Um, one of the ideas that we're doing for a fundraiser that we are starting, um, we talked a lot about before, but we're start, we finally found the chair, is we're going to raffle off a charity chair. And it is a chair that we got donated, um, so it didn't cost us anything. And the two of them will paint it with some type of um, theme. And then we will raffle off tickets, um, and we're going to sell them to anybody and everyone. And then there will be one lucky winner that will receive the painted, cha the hand painted chair, um, and then the money will go towards, um, you know, paying for um, everything, <laughs> anything, um, the flight and the um, hotel and so forth. So um, we all the, we have other ideas as well. We're just starting uh, brainstorming on that. So um, we'll let you know. That's it. All right, thank you. Wait, guys, don't go oh. anywhere, please. Dear, would you mind just bringing your paint, your picture down so that we can all see it up close? It's beautiful. But we have a um, certificate honoring you from the Board of Education. Yeah. Good job. We're very envious of your talents. <laughs> Okay, next is our items of interest for members of the Board of Education. Does anyone have anything they'd like to share? You on that art artwork to talk about Friday? Seems yes, like a good, absolutely. A good little move in. Um, Enrichmond 2015 is happening on Friday, uh, this Friday, uh, from 6 to 8. Uh, and there have been over uh, 150 art pieces of artwork donated from uh, the elementary middle school and high school art students from students uh, and that has been a lovely gift that they have donated this is a fundraiser for the richmond education foundation it's going to happen here in this building uh, and we were present the other day to hang those um, amazing pieces of artwork so there's going to be a silent auction for those pieces so come at six o'clock uh, you can place a bid uh, for any of those pieces uh, that you're interested in. You can also hear some of our amazing students perform. Musicians will be there, student musicians will be there to perform. And uh, we have some local uh, restaurants who um, are going to be here. So it's our version, Richmond School's version of the Arts, Beats and Eats idea. And um, it's gonna be a great celebration. We have a magician coming. Jason Magic is gonna be here and he's gonna perform in the auditorium. Uh, so it's, it's just gonna be a really lovely, wonderful celebration of the arts and a celebration of all of our students' amazing talent. Thank you so much to the fine and performing arts educators that have been a part of planning and helping this all come together. Um, at eight o'clock uh, on the auditorium stage, there will be uh, the raffle drawing where the first prize is fifteen hundred dollars if you haven't gotten your ticket for that we have tickets here tonight they are twenty dollars a piece um, second prize is five hundred dollars and third prize is two hundred dollars so uh, get your raffle uh, ticket tonight or friday night um, at the event it starts at six o'clock again so it's going to be a great time please come Anyone else? No. I just wanted to take a moment before we get to our public comments portion of our meeting to kind of um, explain exactly how public comments work here at our school board meetings. Um, we talked a little bit of, as a board afterwards and um, I really haven't done a very good job of explaining when it comes to public comments how it works. So I'm gonna try to clear that up tonight. Um, our public comments portion of our meeting is a time where anyone in the audience who would like to come up and address the board can. You have three minutes to speak. 
Uh, there is a card up there where you can put your name and your telephone number. It is not a time for any back and forth discussion, if you will. While this is a, a public meeting, it is, our meeting is not a meeting of the public. So though there were people that were in attendance last month and had some questions and concerns and it may have looked to those out in the audience that board members were just sitting here um, doing nothing, not reacting, what have you, when in fact that's really not the case. That part, of, part of our responsibility as a board when individuals come up is to hear what they have to say and we turn it over to our superintendent who runs the school district to look into concerns that come before the board. So you, you won't see when you come up here to speak at public comments, you won't see us engaging back and forth with you. That's how our meetings run. Um, so we just wanted to clarify that and we also wanted to clarify that while it, it can be difficult and it's nerve wracking to come up here and talk in front of the board, we know that it's nerve wracking to speak up here as well sometimes. Um, but we do have a time limit that is set and that is three minutes. And in order to keep our meetings running more efficient, um, we are going to um, keep people to that three minutes time. Um, Mrs. Smith is our board secretary, so that will be her responsibility to uh, watch the clock for us. Um, and so when the three minutes are up, you, your time will be up to speak. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that before we moved forward in the meeting tonight. Presentations. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next item is presentations, and we have the baseball team's overnight trip to Mount Pleasant. And I believe that, yes, there is Coach Evans walking up. That's okay, we'll, we'll walk you through it. Um, what it is that you will do, um, Mr. Evans, is to Tell us what you're here for, what the purpose is of your trip, that okay, sort of thing. Uh, we have all the paperwork that okay, you turned so you in, that, just, that just so that you know question. that, yes. All right, well, what, what we're trying to do is some, to do what the good teams do, the rest of us. We're trying to go to play good talent. Uh, Mount Pleasant called us, and they have four of the four finalist teams that are playing in a tournament in Mount Pleasant. They asked us to come be a part of it, so that's what we're trying to do. I'm asking for your approval to go there and play. Uh, we are going to depart Saturday morning. Parents were going to drive with the appropriate forms filled out and presented prior to leaving. Uh, we are going to be uh, leaving Saturday morning, playing in a doubleheader on Saturday, and then staying overnight in a hotel at the Soaring Eagle Water Park uh, with the kids. Uh, we have fundraised enough money to pay for the expense. It's no expense to the school. Uh, we have booked rooms. We have already booked rooms at the uh, Soaring Eagle Water Park. Uh, kids will be chaperoned just like they do at all of our state tournaments. Uh, four players to a room. Parents are also staying, but I'm asking them to stay on a different floor um, so that uh, there will be four coaches from the district that will be in attendance that will be staying overnight also. And we will just get up the next day and return to, return to the school district um, on Sunday. Um, does anyone have any questions? I do. Um, when you're talking in your form about the chaperones and um, anybody that's a chaperone obviously has gone through the iChat process and all of that, so that's nothing correct Correct. Yes. Cause they're, because they're coaches? Yes, ma'am. The, they they all came the to the meeting with Mr. Benoit earlier in, okay. the, uh, in the spring. Okay. And we did play over Easter. I know that all the scores weren't in there. While everybody was on break, we had five games. Uh, we didn't play as well as we wanted to, but we're slowly starting to improve. So I know I saw Mr. Walmsley every day. Uh, I know I didn't see everybody, but while most people were gone, we played or practiced every day. Okay. Um, does anybody else? My question was uh, to you. Uh, I know that the district put together a meal money situation for kids. And I was wondering if it would be appropriate for me to you give them meal money. Like when we go away to the state, I have, meal, I have money in our program from what we fundraised for. I'm not well, sure how prior practice works when they go away like that. Can I, 
I know we've worked out a system for when we go to state tournament. Can I just use the same system and pay for it out of the baseball account? Or should I have the kids pay themselves since we're going away? Or would you like to just send me an email and let me know how to handle that? I, well, I guess I, I yeah, because I'm not Is sure what you... baseball an internal student activities account or... Correct. It's an internal student account. Your fundraised account. Yeah, all of our money that we fundraise for is in that internal account. I would be happy to pay for that money and give receipts. Like I was planning on taking them to, uh, you know, big boys or Shoney's they have up there that I could get one receipt and turn that in uh -huh. for reimbursement. I don't know why I can't do that. Well, we, can, we can work with you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. We just need an itemized receipt is what really. Correct. What we need, so. Just standard procedure. Yep. Normally, um, these requests come to us long before the season starts. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, it was done. It was talked about prior to, but there was a change in administration where we had started the process and maybe it did not make it all the way. As soon as the new person, we quickly remembered that this had to get done. I apologize for not getting it done sooner. Okay. But I was aware of that it was, paperwork was already in the works, but it did not make it to the final destination. Okay. Because I was made aware of that pretty, f as soon as this, because our schedule gets done in November or right. December. I think right. I booked this in December and I was told about that. And so after the first year is when we were, we started the paperwork, but. So next year when you want to do it, you'll come. Absolutely. Much quicker. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, Normally, this, this meeting, we have two meetings a month. First meeting is a presentation where you would present, and then our next meeting that we would have at the end of the month, which is the 27th, would be when we would take action, okay? Um, and your event, you're going on the, that Saturday, that, the Saturday of the end of that week, yeah, correct? Mark, May, May 2nd. 2nd. May 2nd. Okay. Um, so I don't know what anyone on the board feels, but I guess someone, um, do we want him to wait until the 27th or just would someone like to make a motion? So for this one time, we'll make a, mo um, make a motion to approve the baseball overnight trip to Mount Pleasant as presented. Support. Is that you, Jeff? Yep. Okay, it has been moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Good luck. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you for coming tonight. Next, public comment. Again, this is a portion of our meeting. If you would like to address the board, uh, we, <laughs> as he's running up, uh, we just ask that you please state your name. And if there is a question that you would like to have answered, please leave your name and phone number on the card and Mr. Walmsley will get back with you. Hello, uh, my name Hello. is Pat Akerley, and uh, I'm a, a parent of a student and a parent of a former student graduate. I'm also a teacher at Lakeshore High School, and for the last five years, have been the program coordinator for Richmond football. So uh, first, I just want to say thank you to the board for allowing uh, us to do something proactive to save freshmen sports instead of um, over the years where people have had doubts of how that was going to happen. This uh, Spring Fest event that the committee's been putting together is a real positive thing for the community. There's a lot of people involved. There's been nothing but good things come of it. The discussions, um, the kind of community feeling that it's creating. Uh, the event itself is going to be a blast. Uh, the cow chip bingo is um, it's a chance. It's a 20, uh, it, the raffle tickets are um, $20 and you have a chance to win $2,500 and these cows it's gonna be so fun to watch if you get a chance to look at YouTube uh, they, they wander around the football field and when one of them leaves a present on your number you win the money it's it's really a clever idea and it's a it's a one-time event once a year to solve the problem once and forever how do we fund freshman sports and it doesn't put the onus on one group uh, football we would have no problem funding our freshman football, but some sports aren't so lucky to have the amount of numbers we have and the fundraising support we have. So uh, I wanted to thank you guys for allowing that to move forward to be a, a really fun annual event. Tickets are available here. Several people have them. See Mrs. Akerley, 
Uh, I think uh, Ms. Furtaw has some tickets available today as well. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Benoit, who has met tirelessly with the committee, um, and uh, they've put this together. A lot of people don't see the behind the scenes, and I just think they all ought to be recognized for their efforts to, uh, to help fund freshman sports, and hopefully it'll be so successful, we can not only fund it, but we can start doing some really great things for our freshman students. Thank you. Thank you. And there's the flyer, just so everyone, if you haven't seen it. So you can plug your work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is there anyone else who would like to address the board? No? Okay. We will move on to our consent agenda items. Uh, a motion would be in order to approve the consent agenda items. So we'll close session. What? We'll yes, session. somewhere we do. One moment. Going to go over the questions. Sorry, today. Terry's not here tonight, so Bridget and I are. Yes, we're uh, <laughs> we're we're doing the best we can here. Is all we're going to say. <laughs> okay, now that we have those, a motion would be in order. Okay, it has been moved and supported. Uh, any discussion? Um, I know that I turned in some questions with regards to claimants accounts, and I believe Tracy did as well. I don't know if anyone else did, but Brian, if you have some answers for those. Sure, there were some questions regarding um, check number four one, excuse me, four one four one two for daily snow removal. This bill that we received is through the February 14th in service, or, uh, services provided. Uh, check number 41423 for J. Pepper's Music and the check 41426 for Port Huron Music uh, and check number 41561 for Mr. Finley. These are reimbursements for um, music that They've already used the allocation in the general fund account, and now they are using the uh, money that they fundraised. Um, there is not a, a necessarily a line item for our elementary music, um, so these would be coming out of the teacher supply there. Um, Wait. Sorry. Why isn't there a line item for elementary music? It was never when the original budget was built as a separate line item. Each teacher in the elementary school get, received an allocation at the beginning of the year. Um, mm, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to say no. Okay. That's not the case, because when we talked about, when we were doing the budget last year, and we talked about um, these items going to general fund money and not um, activity accounts, the, the idea was supposed to be anything if for K twelve. Yeah, unless okay. am I right or wrong? Is that what I remember specific discussion about middle school. High school. I don't know that I Not remember elementary, elementary okay. but that's just uh, my memory but, at this well then let's know. mark that. So we so, have okay. a to build this budget. Okay. I don't remember. Um, check number four one four six three for Michigan Association of School Administrators is um, membership it's a renewal of a membership. There is no late fees for it, it's just it's a renewal of a, an annual membership. So it, we're renewing it in the middle of the year for this year? It's the the timing of it would, our invoice would go into the sometime next school year too, it's when we renew it. But so it says 14, 15 membership, that doesn't make sense. The membership began this year under the previous superintendent. <coughs> when I got the bill and everything switched over to me, mm -hmm. it was later in the year, they kept sending us the stuff that we owed for the whole year. Typically, the memberships come out over the summer. In the change of uh, superintendents, right. that bill did not come to me. I don't know where it went. So once so we are paying it later. But there's no late fees to okay. it, yes. Um, there was questions regarding the building secretary subs for the PCMI. Um, the subsecretary accounts for high school and elementary school are currently under budget. Middle school is at budget amount and there is no budget that was for special education substitutes. So when that person is out, I'm not filling as a, as a sub. Um, check number 41486 uh, was a reimbursement for postage. It was uh, paid through the softball internal account. She oh, bought stamps. Okay. okay. 
Check number 41488, the odd, it was a field trip. They went to go see the Little Mermaid. It was the um, um, ticket price, if you will, for the, the, the presentation. Uh, one of the other questions, uh, no, I'll get that in a minute here. Uh, check number 41504 um, was for a reimbursement of supplies. Uh, and looking at the timing of that, um, what we think is there was a delay in getting the, the purchase card um, to, the, to Mrs. Dowker, so there wasn't a purchase card, so this individual purchased out of their own money to be reimbursed. Um, they, they do have a purchasing card now. Uh, 41517. Uh, these three teachers, those are the, the um, classroom allocations that were given. Um, it depends on when they turn in their receipts or what time they're, they're um, what they're purchasing. So everyone got the, the 250 amount? That's, that's my understanding. I, have, I don't know. Okay. Not, I, let me, classroom teachers. I don't mm -hmm. think the specials or itinerant staff got the same amount when okay. it was allocated, but I, I'm... Okay. I'd have to look into that one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, 41525 was a mileage reimbursement. There's two exact same amounts because they're charged to two different accounts. One is to a high school conference account. One is to a Title II account. So we split the costs between okay. those two. Uh, 41543 is a mileage account for the state competition uh, to DECA, to Grand Rapids. 41547 Kelpa Systems. Uh, this is paid out of Title II funds. Half of this is a setup fee, the other half is an annual. Uh, beginning next year, uh, actually this year, we're, we're documenting the paperwork, but next year for the entire staff, um, staff will be able to log in electronically their P professional development to keep an electronic record. Okay. That file then is used to report to the state annually. But what it does is this year particularly we had an audit of one of the individuals who the state requested literally sign in sheets and stuff from stuff that happened uh, Mr. Benoit or Mr. Bartels that was about two months ago three months ago that we did the audit for the teacher and it happened like two years ago they wanted stuff so we had to go back this would automate and put it all electronically so we're not digging through um, it's going to save on a lot of expenses um, 41550 is a mileage um, reimbursement for, there's several, there's conferences, there's uh, meetings for principal um, groups, athletic state competitions that were uh, um, uh, that she attended. Um, 41565 is an assistant coach um, for the basketball. When we had the um, internal budgets and the finance committee reviewed that was listed as one of their on their budgets um, the question is, is is this legal to do uh, absolutely we have to the the business office has to get a um, all the the tax information for that that person that person's issued then a 1099 at the end of the year for their taxes to claim that income on their taxes um, The 41569, um, what we did on this one is we um, gave an advance with the clearing the advance with the itemized receipts that would be returned after the event. Um, ideally, we're trying to get the check made out right to the vendor, but sometimes um, that doesn't happen. So mm -hmm. we, in this case, we provide an advance for uh, that teacher so that they could uh, pay for the expenses. Um, the other questions I received was regarding the early college that was paid for. Um, we have 13 students that we paid two semesters for, two students that we paid one semester for. Early college is the um, program, if you remember, that by the, they are actually a five-year student, and by the time they graduate at the end, they have also an associate's degree that it, um, is at no charge to them. Um, the question regarding the odd um, about the arrangements um, when we get the bills for the um, utilities we invoice them for the utilities um, so we are charged for any um, performances that our kids attend or our students attend and then um, the question regarding the, the the payment for the assistant coach was also on that i think 
I think that's it. Was I think it? I got them all. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next, our robotics team. Mr. Rudebean. Thank you for allowing us to come here and present um, to you guys tonight. Um, as many of you have already heard, uh, Mr. Benoit and Ms. Michon have already mentioned some of our success this year. Um, we attended two district events this year, one in Troy, one in Waterford, uh, Kettering. Both events we did very, very well at. Uh, we did win an award at both events. Um, at Detroit event, we did do it on the semifinals. Didn't quite make it, but uh, that's the farthest we've been as a team. Um, that qualified us to go to the Michigan State competition, which Troy was over um, <clears throat> spring break. It was over uh, Good Friday and Saturday. We just got back from Grand Rapids from the state competition late Saturday night, um, where, again, we also did very well. There's 102 total teams there. Uh, we were chosen, uh, not to bore you with details, but each, each, each one has three alliances. Each, each team has three teams competing as an alliance. Um, there were 16 total alliances for the, what they call the Octo Finals. This is the largest that's been for the Michigan State Finals. We were chosen by the number four alliance, which was, was huge. Um, we basically, I don't want to say walk through, but we, we did very well in, in the Octo Finals, uh, the round of 16. We were the second place team uh, going into the quarterfinals. Unfortunately, uh, there's a couple mishaps with the robots, not ours, I don't want to put Lady Blaine, but um, <laughs> our drivers did, our drive team did an exceptional job, and uh, we did what we had to do, and unfortunately, and, and again, things happen, uh, they've happened throughout the entire thing, so uh, no fault of theirs, but we didn't make it through, but it did qualify us for the world championships, and we did win an award um, at the state championship also, so we, we won three awards this year. Um, the one at the state finals, was the judges award which is presented to the team that's not the top in any of the different categories they give awards to but collectively is one of the best teams and the judges awarded us that award um, and we also did get the uh, number one safety pit um, area work area what they call the pit for our team out of 102 teams so kudos to the entire team but for pit safety uh, which is obviously very important when you're talking about robots um, that brings us to what we have in front of us. Um, we are, <clears throat> and unfortunately, um, in, four street, in four small years, we did go to the, some of you remember, we did go to St. Louis four years ago in our first year as a rookie, as a rookie team. Um, that was more for the awards aspect of it, uh, winning the rookie all-star. This one has solely to do with the robot. And, and collectively, this has got to be the ro best robot we built this, um, in four years. Um, other teams have mentioned it, and, and through competition, it's, it's shown that. Um, these kids and mentors, as you see a large gathering of them here, most of the team is here with the mentors, um, have, have literally put in hundreds and hundreds of hours into this robot. Through the summer, um, through fundraising, it's, it's been a successful year all around. Um, not only fundraising, everything else, and as some of you know, robotics is a very expensive thing to run. Um, Luckily this year, the state has uh, was supplied a grant to pay for not only the state championship if the team made it, but also the world's championship. So our registration has been paid for. Um, so that's a, a huge monkey off our back as, as far as the um, economic aspect of our, of our team. Um, you have two things in front of you. I gave you the schedule for the world competition, which actually starts next week. Um, and again, that's why we're, we're here on such a short notice. And, and again, thank you for um, letting us come here. And then I also put together the um, proposed budget for the team um, on there. Um, as you can see, it starts Wednesday, uh, April 22nd next week, and it goes to Saturday. And as you can tell, uh, each day is, is pretty loaded with a lot of activities. Um, they're there 
for the most part, on average from 7-ish, 7.30 to anywhere from 6 to 7 to 8 o'clock at night each day. Um, and that, that's a typical robotics competition, just for those of you who don't know. Uh, it's very, very time consuming. Um, I, I know some of us, myself included, am still recovering from the weekend. Um, it was very busy, you know, obviously the drive home and everything else, but um, very intense and, and, and very obviously gratifying too uh, to, for us to make it to Worlds. Um, this year um, in St. Louis again, they've bumped up the numbers. Last time, last couple of years we've been, or we were there as a rookie, there's 400 teams. They bumped up to 600 teams this year. So 600 teams from across the world are going to be there. Uh, there's approximately, and again, I didn't, I didn't get an exact number, there's approximately 85 to 90 Michigan teams of that 600 that are going. Um, Michigan also leads the, the world in number of teams. We have approximately 362, 357 teams, which is about 100 more than what California has, which is the second place one. So, and we have more rookie teams this year in Michigan than the entire world had. So Michigan is, is building as far as the robotics um, competitions. Um, you see, again, the proposed budget. Um, we need to still determine how we're going to get there. Um, I know Mr. Berkmeyer was working on trying to find us a charter bus. Um, he's been able to, unable to locate one. Uh, he's called many different companies, and they're all um, unavailable as far as for that time frame. Um, so we're still working on um, transportation down there. What I have provided with you is the hotel stay and also the um, food as proposed by uh, Mr. Benoit, the information that was given. Um, as you can see, each night uh, the two mentors is one room and then the um, team members, we have 16 total four rooms, there's, there's four people staying in a room. Um, and then the lunches and dinners for the team and the two mentors. Um, breakfast is usually provided by the hotel, we just eat at the hotel room, uh, so we don't need any, any food monies for that expense. Um, one thing I would like to ask uh, from the board, and you see the, the total there at the bottom, uh, what's, what again, predicted through Saturday night, um, again, depending on transportation, it goes till late Saturday as far as the award ceremony. So most of us would probably leave if we, depending on the, on the transportation provided, um, leave Sunday morning. Uh, I didn't include that in there because again, it, it's after the competition. If, if you see so fit to, to add that in there, um, that would obviously be great appreciated. But again, based on the, the transportation, we didn't know if we were gonna leave late Saturday night. If it's a bus or charter bus, we can sleep through the night, which we did previously. Um, and as some of you know, previously we did take the bus with the Fighting Pie, the Armada team. Um, unfortunately, there's no room for that this year. Um, obviously, our team is a lot larger. We only had six members last time. We have 16 now, plus our, our mentors have more than quadrupled in number. So um, unfortunately, it's just not enough room on the bus for us and them uh, to head down there. So um, one thing I would like to ask the board, again, for, for consideration, um, we do, the, the school does allow for the two mentors, which is one room. Um, again, we have eight mentors. It is kind of a special situation. Um, where it's, it's not necessarily called coaches. Um, I know most, most teams have one or two coaches, maybe three coaches here and there uh, for some of the bigger ones, like football and wrestling and stuff. Um, with eight mentors, uh, it's needed because there's so many different aspects to robotics. Um, there's some of the people that deal solely mainly with the um, build aspect of it. There's the business aspect of it. There's the programming electrical aspect of it. So each of the mentors kind of take a, a, a singular role in kind of providing each part of that team with, with their expertise. Um, so I would like to, because it, it does get costly. I know um, this is a, a special occasion. Um, most teams are not going to spend this much time or, or, or this far away from home in a competition. Um, this is the only Richmond team that does attend a national or world championship. Um, so I would like to ask the board if, if we could um, maybe add on to the number of mentors uh, that have rooms paid for. It is a very costly um, 
thing for a lot of these parents or mentors, which, which they all are, they're parents of, of people on the team, um, to absorb. Uh, for, for all these nights from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, you're talking five nights. It, it's pretty expensive for one family to do that in addition to the food cost. And, and again, based on um, what we've done before, I'm not sure what the, what the travel arrangements are going to be for the entire team. Uh, like I said, we're, we're still working out the details on that one. So um, again, I didn't put in the budget. It's not what the school generally pays for, but I would like you to consider that um, for, the, for the parents' sake. Um, again, because of the, the actual time that all these, these people put into this team. And, and again, it's all volunteers, and there's, there's no monetary compensation for any of these parents or mentors. Uh, obviously, besides myself, which is from the school, but um, with, with the literally hundreds of hours they put in there throughout the entire year, um, I think it would be a nice gesture to, to again, provide them with at least some compensation for a hotel or stay or, or food or one or the other. Are there any questions? Uh, before we have questions, Brian, oh. Mr. Walmsley just has something. He, we did not get, we usually get a little something from the superintendent in our packet, but because right, this right. happened real quick, so he's going to speak to what okay. he would normally give to us in writing. Okay. So. First of all, I apologize to the board. Um, I was at Lee today, and Mrs. Uh, Terry, my assistant, was only here half the day today, so coordinating that. So I had a, a motion to uh, approve up to $5,000 for the robotics team um, to go to the, the world competition. As uh, Mr. Rubin said, there's, there's still an uncertainty on the transportation. We've tried several um, charter buses to see if we can get some. We have not been successful with the companies we've, we've called. Um, so I do have a, so that would be my recommendation. And then if for some reason that we weren't successful and they chose to drive, which I don't know, I don't, that those dollars could be reallocated up to that certain amount for the team. Okay. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Rubin? No? I, I do have to say, you know, um, that these mentors and students give 110%. I was actually... Uh, Several weeks ago, I was at my daughter's dance competition, at, and we stopped at uh, Big Boy at Hall Road in Garfield at late one night, and I ran into them eating there, and they were, they were planning and strategizing over, I don't know if you had a Sunday, but I had a Sunday there, so, um, but it, 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 a lot of hours went into that, and so I give them a lot of credit um, for what they do for mentoring the student, and they are committed um, to, to being, representing Richmond to the finest. So. Absolutely, and I, uh, on the Good Friday, I did go to the robotics competition that was in Troy, the morning session, I guess is what you would call it. Um, wow, it was very impressive. My husband and I, our first time um, experiencing that, and uh, it truly is amazing what you guys do, your mentors, everything, um, and it is something to be proud of, um, Mr. Rudbeen and, and the students, and for our school and community. Um, it's very cool, and I'm just saying, anybody, if you ever want to go, you need to go. It's crazy. I would like to say something to the board. Um, Certainly, and yeah. this would be Brandon Potts. I'm a senior on the team. Uh, I was one of, I'm one of the current uh, two existing kids on the team that started the team four years ago. You're a founding member. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, on behalf of the team, um, as far as making it to the World Championship, being one of the two that are still on it that have experienced that. It's one of the things that drove us as young students to be as successful as we have been in our four years. Um, I'm very sure if we probably didn't make it as far as we did our first year, we wouldn't have been as driven as we have been in the past four years. Um, and it's something great for our young kids that we have on the team of six new kids. Um, so it's something great for them to experience being their first year as far as getting them on that same driven path to be successful for their next four years. Um, and as far as myself, uh, it's really influenced me to where I'm going to be heading in my future as far as heading to college this fall. Uh, I'll be attending Kettering University for uh, my double major on electrical and mechanical engineering. 
Um, and I have received the first uh, robotic scholarship. Um, it's I, am, I will be the first recipient on our team for that because um, they give away millions of dollars in scholarships a year. Awesome. So for the board to consider is the experience it gives the team as far as the future for the team. Very well said, Brandon. Thank you. Um, and I know those of us that were on the board uh, when you, you guys first came, uh, we remember, and we remember how excited that you were and how exciting it was to start this. Um, and it really is kind of cool to see how it's, how it's gone. But um, one thing that I want to ask is that um, you come to a board meeting after and bring the robot, because yeah. you know we really, we groove on the robot. Fabulous, because we would love for you um, to do that. As he mentioned, we won awards throughout the season. Uh, just a quick mention of those awards. We won the Creativity at our first district event, which uh, is in honor of the, war the robots uh, design as far as the creative aspect the students had in designing the robot to be different from other robots. Um, at our second event, we won the Innovation and Control Award. Um, which celebrates a team that used innovative ways to control their robot and play the game. Um, and then it states the judges. Excellent. Awesome. Um, how about if you and your robotics team members maybe stand up so everybody can see you and your, your mentors that are here this evening as well. Um, well done. And thank you to the mentors and the parents that are out there because it is, it is a lot of work and it's a lot of time. I just want to add, uh, I hope if we did the motion of uh, up to and not to exceed an amount, whoever allocates that money, my worry is on Saturday night. It's going to be the easiest way is to take the cheapest way out. Everyone's going to be exhausted and then you got to drive home. So we don't need an accident or something to... Uh, bad light on this so just keep cognizant of either a driving plan if we can't come up with a bus but keep that in mind okay. um, any other questions or comments yeah I'd just like to comment okay. um, I know it's been kind of the past practice of uh, a local business to offer up their bus for, for state tournaments and I thought maybe that was up for consideration for a national trip for you guys Maybe. It's an idea, isn't it? No, so if anybody can make contact with them, see why it couldn't be. I okay. think I see Mr. Wamsley writing, so maybe that would be a good idea. Now, how much of the robot that you guys are using today is kept the same parts from when you started? Because I remember you guys, some of the stuff gets destroyed, and then some of the stuff you're able to kind of recycle. Is there still a lot of stuff that's still being used? You mean repurposing? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Actually, this year we did you? We didn't oh. uh, cannibalize anything off the yeah. previous robot. We, we did that for a purpose. We want to have uh, uh, robots that we can take into the community and show them. Okay. So okay. we didn't want to dismantle last year's robot. Oh, very good. A lot, a lot of teams to, to that. A lot of teams have big corporate sponsors. Mm -hmm. So they build what's called a practice bot. So they have one that their drivers can, can drive at all times. Because after six weeks of building, we have to bag it. You can't work on it anymore until just before the competition. Other teams actually build another one, an identical duplicate of it, that their, their drivers can train with it, they can, they can manipulate it, they can do whatever they want, they can change it, and then when it comes down to competition, they can make those changes to their original robot. We don't have that luxury. And as far as success, we got yeah. no driver practice going into competition this year. And we right. still made playoffs at all of our events. Right. So kudos to our drive team. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I think we have a drive team member in the back there, it looks like. <laughs> and one here, too. Okay. Very good. The, the last thing I just want to point out is uh, Mr. Rubin and Ms. Bashan and I met probably about two, three weeks ago. Um, we've, I've committed to them that they will have a spot here to build and work on theirs. Because right now they're working out of uh, some, a pole barn. <laughs> so to have a spot in the school that um, the students can work right here and store the materials and so forth that we're going to coordinate Excellent. that. So. Excellent. Thank you. Um, okay. There, there, Dan, I don't know. There's a sample motion there if you wanted to. Thank you, Mr. Rudbeen. Thank you.
I'd like a motion to accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve up to $5,000 for the robotics team 4130 to attend the uh, world championship. Support. Is that Jeff? Yep. Okay. It's been moved and supported. All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Good luck, team. Yes, absolutely. Okay, next is our closed session for purposes of the superintendent's evaluation. A motion would be in order. So moved. Support. Was Andy? It's been moved and supported. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We'll just take a maybe a five-minute break, and then, Mrs. Michon, can we get into your conference room? Oh, it is.